Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know. Uh, Y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So in today's video, we are going to just be chatting about the Amber Hilberly case. Have you guys ever heard about this? Uh, this is about the beautiful young bride who was seven months pregnant when she pushed her husband of one year out of a window, 25th story, pushed him out the window. And he came crashing down 17 stories. He landed on the top floor of the parking garage, hit going 75 miles per hour and then hit the cement. Devastating, yes. But the great debate is, was it an accident or was it on purpose? And so I'm gonna tell you guys the story today and I wanna hear you guys' opinion at the end and I will give you mine as well. So let's just start at the beginning. Amber Hilberling was born in October of 1991. Her mom said that she did live a very privileged life. She was pampered. She had everything she wanted. I went through her pictures as a kid and you could tell, like they went, you know, on all kinds of trips. Her mother had her teeth done. She had her teeth done at a new, at a young age, beautiful smile. Um, her mother was very well put together. They, they did all of these fancy things. You could just tell she lived a very good life, a pampered life from the words of her own mother. Amber met Josh Hilberling when she was about 18 years old. Josh was a few years older than her and he was in the military. Josh was a tall, six foot four, strikingly handsome young man. Josh was also in the Air Force. He was known to be very smart and athletic. He played football when he was in high school. Amber, when she was in high school, she had a 4.0 GPA average. She did a lot of sports as well. She ran track, she played soccer, she did dance, she played volleyball, she was very much involved. So these two, from the outer perspective, looked like a perfect couple. I mean, you've got the tall, six foot four, Air Force smart athletic football player serving our country. And then you've got the beautiful, smart, you know, young woman that comes from a gr uh, great, well to do family who does dance and volleyball and all that stuff. And they get together and they fall in love. They met each other around the beginning of 2010, and by the middle of 2010, they were already married. Now you're wondering, okay, why the rush if they have these like, awesome lives. Well, Josh was getting ready to be sent off in the military and Amber wanted to go with him and be able to stay on base with him. In order for them to do that and for her to go with him and actually live on the military base with him, they had to be married. So they went ahead and got married and it may have been a quick wedding, but it was a beautiful wedding. I mean, she was dressed like a literal princess. She had the princess tiara. He dipped her down. They had all the beautiful pictures and it was gorgeous. It was magical and it was wonderful. The problem is though, one once Amber moved away and moved in with Josh, things started to change as they always do. Just for you guys out there, if you don't know, you really learn about somebody once y'all move in together. That's when you get to know what kind of person they are. That doesn't matter if that's a roommate, family member, lover, whatever. And when Amber moved away to be with Josh, they started to fight, okay? They are a young couple. They are just fresh out of, one's, in, one's fresh out of boot camp, the other one's fresh out of high school. And according to Amber, mother, it was said that Amber's mother said that once she moved away, she just wasn't used to that life. She was alone. She was away from her family. She was used to living a pampered, privileged lifestyle, going and getting her toes done and her you know, nails done and spending time with her mom, who was her best friend. And it was a huge culture shock to her. It doesn't mean that was right or wrong. It was just very, very different. So it put a lot of stress on their relationship and they were fighting 
a lot. They eventually decided to move back home. However, that happened. I'm not really sure. I do know that eventually Josh was discharged from the military. Now there's rumors that are going around and I was not able to confirm anything myself, but it is said that he was discharged and Amber said that he was taking a lot of pills and drinking a lot. See, Josh was doing substances and partying a lot before he went into the military too. Then once he went into boot camp, he stopped all that. He was doing good for a while. And then according to Amber, he got back on it and that was causing their fights from her. So when he was discharged from the military and they moved back home, they moved in with Amber's family. Amber's mom eventually said, look, y'all need y'all's own space. Y'all are married. Amber ended up being pregnant. She was super excited about it. And Amber's mom said, you know, y'all need to have your own space. So Amber's mom got them set up in this apartment, a beautiful apartment in Tulsa on Sky Rise Building. This building has been there for well over 50 years. I mean, it's a well-known, very, very high-rise, beautiful building on the 25th floor. Now, before we get into that, I believe, this is just my belief, I don't know, I believe the reason why her mother said, y'all need your own space is probably because they were fighting in her house and making everybody else uncomfortable. Anybody ever let somebody come and live with them and they'd be fighting all the time and you like, hold up, let me help you get an apartment. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think happened. I don't know. I'm just speculating. So they move into this apartment and they were not in this apartment, but barely two weeks when the incident happened. Now, before we get into the incident, I will tell you that there were, you know, neighbors that testified that they heard yelling, they heard screaming, they heard fighting a lot. And by this time, Amber is seven months pregnant. So she is raging with hormones. She's big, probably hot, hungry, and, and aggravated at all times. But they were in this beautiful apartment and what could go wrong? I mean, they, they, they were all set up. Well, the day that this happened, maintenance was called to their apartment because they had a broken window. Now it was alleged that, you know, a couple days prior to that, Josh had got angry at Amber and threw a laundry basket basket at the window and the window cracked or broke. So a maintenance guy came up. Now the maintenance guy would testify later that when he got there, he could just tell that they had been fighting. Like it was tension in the room. You know, when you walk in, you're like, hey, how are you? And they're like, fine, fine. You're like, whoa, okay. What did I just walk into? It was that type of vibe. And he could tell that the she was pregnant. Now she's 5'5", five, five. she's little, he's 6'4", you know, Josh is 6'4", so cool, you know, quite a bit of height difference and size difference between them. But the maintenance man just minded his own business. He went on into the other room to fix the window and get his job done. He also testified though, before he went into the room that Josh asked him, listen, can I just fix the room myself? I don't wanna pay for it. And the guy was like, no, like you can't, not legally, like we have to be the ones to do it. Plus it had cost you 150 bucks, whatever. Josh was kind of irritated and upset about it. I guess he wanted to fix the own window, which why would you want that responsibility? This is a 25th floor high rise. Like, no, let the professionals handle it. Nevertheless, the guy, the maintenance man testified that Josh seemed irritable and aggravated. The next thing you know, while the man is fixing the window, he hears what sounds like running, stomping, boom, 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 and then a loud crash. When he hears the crash, he's looking out the window as he's fixing it and he sees Josh's body falling face first. They said that it took about three to four seconds for him to make impact to the concrete. And when he made impact to the concrete at a speed of 75 miles per hour, he died instantly. It is said that when a movable object hits a non-movable object, that at that speed, the brains and the internal organs all explode. Like, oh my gosh, it just crazy to think about. And the neighbors on each side heard a woman screaming, no, no, oh my God, no, 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 no. And the maintenance guy went into the other room and got Amber and started taking her downstairs. Now, bystanders that saw this situation said that they saw a pregnant woman completely in distress, crying and super upset, run over to the body and was holding the body, holding the head, begging, please, please come back to me, come back to me. The paramedics got there when they got back, when they got there, the Amber was begging them, fix him, fix him, please, please, you have to fix him. Like, no, he can't die, please. The cops come and get her. She is obviously this little pregnant woman, you know, and is completely tra traumatized and in a, in a panic. And 
People had called 911. There was 911 calls that were released and they were calling saying somebody just jumped out of a window, somebody fell out of a window, all different types of stuff. And so they take Amber down to the police station because she is the witness. She's the main witness in this situation. And they take her and they put her in an interrogation room and they bring her grandmother in there so her grandmother can console her. Well, of course she is in a police station and in an interrogation room. And even though there's no cops in there, there are cameras in there as well as recordings for your audio. At this point, pregnant and very, very clearly upset and traumatized Amber starts crying and just talking to her grandmother. This whole body was broken. <laughs> and I just held him and kissed his cheeks and screamed for him to wake up. <sighs> this is gonna turn into a nightmare. We just have to pray we'll get through it. I don't deserve to pray. <laughs> Who am I praying to, Josh? Josh hates me. <laughs> I'm not even gonna be able to meet him in, he in heaven anymore because he just hates me. I killed him. Amber, stop talking like that. <laughs> what kind of person am I? You're a loving person that has been abused by Josh just as well. No, I, I'm a horrible person who could do that. Who could do that? <laughs> Push my husband and make him fall out the window. <laughs> I wish I could just go back and know that if I pushed him, it was going to happen. Amber, quit saying you pushed him out the window. Did you intentionally... No, okay. of course not. Okay, that's what they're going to take it as, baby. That's why I said... Everything that you say, they're going to... In a different matter. Because they're going to say, okay, Amber. I just don't understand this whole... Legal system? No, not that. I don't understand the whole pattern of events of the last year. <laughs> I was getting married and going to Alaska, everything in Alaska, me being pregnant, coming back here, getting kicked out of mom's house, going to the apartment, and then all for it to just, Josh to just fall out of a high rise building. <laughs> I wish y'all would have never went to the apartment. I mean, what are the chances? How many times has that happened? All Josh's friends, his family, they're going to know he died because he fell out of a high-rise apartment. <laughs> and I just keep watching him fall over and over and over again in my head. Watching him flail and think that he, you know... <laughs> My last thought was, please catch yourself. <laughs> and I would just want to know what was going through his head. If he knew he was going to die. <laughs> if he said a prayer, or if he cursed my name, or if he just thought that he could catch himself too. And then just watching him hit the ground. <laughs> Is there no balcony there from the living room? No. And her grandmother's saying, stop saying that. And she's like, I killed him. I killed him. Josh is going to hate me. He'll hate me forever. I can't believe I killed him. And his, her grandmother's saying to her, stop saying that. You did, did you mean to kill him on purpose? And she's like, no. She was like, I just pushed him. I pushed him and he stumbled and he fell out the window. Like he, the window broke and he fell out the window. Like, but I can't believe it. And then she goes, his family kept saying, his family is right. They're all going to hate me. They always say that I would kill him one day and I did I did please come back to me and she's like crying and begging and like like 
telling her grandmother and just basically crying out to Josh and saying like, I hope this is all a bad dream. Please come back to me. The grandmother is constantly like trying to talk to her and saying, Amber, stop talking like that. And when the cops come in here, don't you dare say any of that until your lawyer gets here. But what they didn't realize at the time was they were already listening. They were listening, they were recording. I watched or listened to Dr. Phil talk about this and I guess it was this whole debacle in court with like how can they use that against her if they didn't read her, her Miranda rights, right? Well, the reason why they can use those recordings against her is because nobody asked her. They weren't interrogating her. They weren't, you know, asking, if they were interrogating her, they would have had to read her her Miranda rights. However, because she was just in a room that just obviously had a camera in it, she just confessed it on her own. And that is the moment that Amber Hilberling went from the position of witness to main suspect. She did not realize at that time that she would not be leaving. She was crying and talking to her grandmother and wanting to know when she could leave. Obviously she's pregnant. Nobody, you know, you want to go home and grieve, right? You want to go home and grieve with your family. You literally just watched your husband, who you love, I don't care how much they fought, they loved each other, you know what I mean? Drop to his death, you pushed him in whatever reason and he's dead and now you're sitting in a jail and interrogation room where it's cold, it's disgusting, it's yucky and you cannot leave. However, Amber was not leaving and she wasn't going to be leaving for a long, long time, if ever, if the police had anything to do with it at this point. So long story short, they end up arresting her on second degree murder. So now she, is, she has killed her husband, whether it was an accident or not, and she's seven months pregnant and she's going into jail and she's completely traumatized. Things start going crazy from here. The media went nuts when I tell you. Remember how I told you that Amber grew up with this like privileged life? Her family was very well known in their community. They had money, they did things, they were involved in their church and their volunteer work and stuff like that. And so therefore you've got this chick now who's this young 19 year old pregnant, beautiful bombshell according to like the magazines and the media and stuff, which she was beautiful, I'm not saying that, but you know, the media really likes to spin on people's looks or maybe people's like intimacy. That's what sells, right? So they really played up this beautiful bombshell murderous wife and the media went nuts. It was a complete frenzy. And of course the Hilberlings, Josh's family, they were upset. Josh's dad would later testify that Josh had called him multiple times and said that Amber was abusive to him. Amber's family, of course, testified that he was abusive to her. So it was like they were abusing each other. Now, mind you, Amber's family does not believe she was abusive and Josh's family does not believe that he was abusive, but that's what it sounds like it was. And if any of you guys have ever been in a toxic relationship, which I don't mean just an abusive relationship, okay, that's one thing, but a toxic where you're both toxic to each other, I have, especially when I was a teenager, okay? That was some of some to the most toxic relationships I ever had was whenever I was a teenager. And you're just bickering at each other all the time and looking for ways almost to make the other person feel the way that you feel, right? Or the way they're making you feel, you wanna make them feel that way. So it's this back and forth of toxicity. It also came out later in court that Josh had actually tried to file a restraining order against Amber before. I guess that there was supposedly a time where they were fighting and Amber took like this glass lamp or something like that, some piece of furniture and busted it on his head. He had to get stitches and staples. And according to other people, she laughed at him and said, good, I hope it hurt or something of the sort. So there was a lot of evidence that Amber could have been an abusive wife and maybe Josh was toxic as well. Maybe he wasn't, I don't know, but it's what it sounds like, but it definitely sounds like Amber had some issues for sure. Now, let's move on to the court situation so we can find out exactly what happened or what they say it said happened. The state's attorney offered Amber five years in prison to take a plea deal to admit guilt to murdering her husband. Amber said that the reason why she denied it, and she did, she denied the plea deal, said she was gonna take it to trial, is because she would never admit to killing her husband, okay? I can't help but to wonder if she didn't take it because she had lived a privileged life and she thought she was gonna get away with it and she probably got away with a lot of different things, but nevertheless, she could have got out in five years and she took it to trial. Meantime, 
all of this is going on, she has her baby, you know, she's going to court, she's going through all of this stuff. It had to be terrible, okay? Obviously, the Josh's family is going through it as well. They just lost their son. They had been telling him he needed to get away from Amber because she was going to kill him one day, and now he's dead. Josh's family actually even said that when they got the call from the cops, they knew instantly that their son was dead. They already knew that he would be dead. In court with a jury of 12, they listened to the recorded conversations between Amber and her grandmother. And you know, it could have went either way. I listened to them as well and I will leave them linked down below if you guys wanna go watch them. I personally saw, when I saw this, I saw a traumatized woman blaming herself. I did not see a murderous woman that just, you know, killed somebody on purpose. Cause I know for me, I, when I do something, I blame myself. Like if I do anything or if it, I'll even blame myself sometimes for something you did. I, I don't know, I have a habit of doing that. But the jury saw it in whatever way they saw it. They gave all the evidence, both sides fought for a long time. They ended up finding Amber guilty of second degree murder and she got sentenced to 25 years in prison. She went after her appeal and it was denied. Different correctional officers would later release statements and say that she had friends in prison, but she also had a lot of people that did not like her. A lot of people looked at Amber in prison as the snooty little girl. I'm pretty sure she probably got money all up on her books. She, you know, kept herself well looking together and she got visits all the time and other girls in there didn't like her. Prison was really, really rough for her. Dr. Phil did come in and interview her one or maybe two times. I did watch the Dr. Phil episode years ago. News update, the Oklahoma Department of Corrections is investigating after they found Amber Hilberlings in her prison cell dead. Now she gained national attention after she was convicted of pushing her husband out of her Tulsa apartment. In October of 2016, Amber was found hanging dead in her cell in prison. It was reported that the officers got her down and tried to revive her for 15 minutes, but she was already dead when they got there. An official autopsy was done on her and it was said that she died from asphyxiation, how do you say the word? Strangulation basically from hanging, but she had meth in her system. So was she taking stuff while she was in prison? Was she getting on substances? Did she take too much substances one night while she was in prison and spaz out and think crazy? crazy mess and then hang herself? Or was she given drugs by an officer? Was she set up? I mean, her family is convinced that she did not do this to herself, that somebody did it to her. Amber's family said the judicial system failed her big time. And the whole reason why she took it to trial was because she believed in the judicial system ever since she was a little kid. I mean, she never had any trouble. She had never been in trouble before or anything. Amber's story was that Josh grabbed her that day, was arguing with her, her and she called him a coward and she pushed him off of her and he lost his footing and he fell into the window. He went crashing out the window. The glass was tested while they were in court and there was people like glass experts that said that this glass, not only was it like 50 years old in this building, but it was as thin as a picture frame glass, that anything could have broke it. I mean, if the laundry basket broke it a few days before. So, so Amber was basically trying to say that it was the glass's fault. She pushed him, yes, she was upset and she was trying to defend herself and her unborn baby. However, the glass broke and she was not expecting it, which y'all, that terrifies me. I mean, how often have we stayed in, you know, buildings that are high rise for the view and there's window there and your kids are there like patting on the window and looking out and if the glass was as thin as a picture frame, terrifying. Nevertheless, I got off track with that there. Amber's parents do believe she was murdered, but the, the autopsy also showed that she had markings on her arms where it looks like that she had possibly have been suicidal. So it is, it's a bit of a mystery. I personally think she did it to herself. I do think she did. One of the guards released a statement later and said that she was friends with Amber in there and Amber said that she was going to die trying to get out. And this was right after her like refusal or denial of appeal and then she hung herself. But you know, she didn't leave a note to her son, her family or anything. I feel terrible for the little boy. The little boy's gonna grow up without his mother or his father, you know, like he's gonna grow up knowing that his mother 
killed his father, whether it was an accident or not. And then later she took her own life as well. So that is just like traumatizing just to know at all. There's been a lot of rumors that Amber possibly struggled from certain mental disorders. And I don't even want to throw them out there because of whatever, but I read a bunch of stuff. Um, I didn't never see the mother say that, but I've heard other people or seen other people write articles and thinking that she had certain mental disorders. I personally think, and I know that this is just such a hard topic and it's a very controversial topic. A lot of people really believe Amber's like this hardcore criminal murderer and there's other people that think she was completely innocent. I do believe that she was mentally ill probably, probably spoiled. I believe she was probably an abuser. I believe he probably was too in their own ways. I don't know if I think that they were like, you know, blacking each other's eyes in any, or anything. Although she did show pictures in court of abuse and they did ask her in court, why didn't you put a restraining order against him or anything? She said she loved him. And I know specifically what that feels like. Some of y'all do. You know, we've been in abusive or toxic relationships where we're trauma bonding and, you know, just treating each other like complete crap and we swear we love each other. I think that was the situation. And I think she pushed him, mad at him for whatever reason and was not expecting him. I think he tripped over his feet. And there was a lot of like talk about why would he have went out head first because they said in court that they believe she pushed him from behind. They thought he was like le leaning down, messing with the TV and she came and pushed him from behind and he went out head first. To me, that doesn't make sense because the window wasn't a, a ceiling to floor window. It stopped at like your chest. So I'm thinking she pushed him from the front. His back hit the window, right? His back hits the window like this and he flipped and then went out head first and hit the ground at 75 miles per hour at 6'4 and 200 pounds. Like he died literally right on impact. And when she was crying in the, in the room, she was saying things like, I wonder, did he pray before he hit the ground? Was he, what was he thinking? Did he try to grab onto something? And it's like, they took a lot of what she said as a, as a confession, but I took it as, like trauma, like that's, ex if that would have happened to me, that's exactly what I would have said. You know, like there's been things that's happened to my kids, you know, Jaden break, break his, broke his arm and it's like, I blame myself, like what I could have done differently. Although logically I know that like he was literally playing on the monkey bars, like in my backyard, in our backyard, like what else could I, it's, it's built for kids, it's monkey bars. But you know, as a mom, you go like, I should have done this and I should have done that. And why didn't I do this? And oh my gosh, ugh, you beat yourself up. And that's what I heard her doing. But the court took that as a confession of a murder. So terrible situation. What do y'all think? Have y'all heard about this story? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, my loves, please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.